Hey everybody, Tommy here with TFL EV bringing you a super exciting video because Kia has flown me out to Los Angeles here at this fantastic studio for an early look at the all new Kia EV9. So we've seen this car at the auto show, we've seen it in some other settings, but this is the first time I'm able to go hands on with this vehicle and bring you some of the really cool details that the EV9 offers because this new three row fully electric SUV is bringing a lot to the table, which I think the market is currently missing. And this car should, um, should really interest a lot of folks, right? Because in the world of EVs, we've got a lot of sedans, we've got a lot of really high performance cars, but there's not a lot of good three row options. And that's where the EV9 comes in. Now let's start with the design, the overall styling and the platform that this vehicle rides on. So this is based on the eGMP architecture. It's the same platform that underpins cars like the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and of course the Kia EV6. Well, the EV9 signifies that yes, it's of course an EV, an electric vehicle, and nine is the classification. Nine, obviously bigger than six. So this is gonna be a larger vehicle than the two row crossover that the EV6 is. Now it still rides on the eGMP e platform. And as such, there are still a number of different motor and powertrain configurations, which we'll dive into in a second. You can get it in rear wheel drive. You can also get it in all wheel drive configuration. Now from a design standpoint, Kia is doing some really special things with this vehicle. This is by far one of the best looking vehicles to come to market in recent years. It offers a lot of really cool styling cues that we just haven't seen on a lot of new cars. It's very squared off, very angular with an eye toward aerodynamics. The drag coefficient on this car is about 0.28, roughly the same as the Audi e-tron. It's a little bit better than cars like the Jaguar I-Pace, a little bit worse than cars like the Tesla Model X, which is going to come in at right around 0.25. So even though you still get some, this fantastic boxy, almost G-Wagon like shape in some ways, it still is a very, very aerodynamic car. But what I love about the EV9 is it's futuristic. It looks a little adventurous, a little bit off-roady with an eye toward the future. If this thing was in a Tron movie, you probably wouldn't second guess it. Now the light signature is super cool. So you've got this continuous LED which starts up here at the top of the headlight housing. Then it makes its way toward the front of the car, going to this little poke before descending downwards and then making its way across the front fascia. And this version is the GT line and you get these little stripes, these little slashes there along the front fascia in the iconic Kia Tiger Nose format, but of course with a twist because it doesn't need the same grill that a lot of the gasoline models use. Now, the GT line also incorporates some features along the front, which makes it stand out from the other, other EV9 trims. So you get these air vents here, this very squared off grill plate, which looks really cool. And if we kind of look back here, you'll notice this different trim of the EV9 is not going to have some of those same design elements that the top trim GT line is going to have. So notice here, the front fascia is going to uh, just be a, a flat panel. We also don't have those squared off grill components there at the bottom. But what this model shows is one of the signature colors of the EV9. So if you want, of course, you get a full suite of glossy colors, but you can also spec the EV9 in a couple of matte colors. This silver one of them, this is kind of the halo color for the EV9, and I think it looks fantastic. Now moving along to the side of the car, we see something that Kia is not afraid of, and that is funky wheel trims. So for basically decades now, we've seen basically the same wheel from many manufacturers in a number of different formats. We've got narrow spokes, we've got wide spokes, and then we have the multicolor black and silver, uh, largely the same across pretty much every manufacturer. Look what Kia has done here. They've gone very geometric. So this GT line here has the square motif. So you can see you've got these squared off spokes, and then being an EV, Kia needs to focus on the impact the wheel has on the range of the vehicle. So they have to incorporate aero elements. And the way they've done that is they've used a little bit of a trick here. So you've got a flat color on the outside and then a gloss color on the inside, which kind of hides the fact that these wheels are mostly filled in in order to aid with aerodynamics. Now, if you think that's crazy, check out this silver car because this one has some truly wild wheels. This has a three spoke design. It's um. 
It's almost like a triangle here located, a pyramid in the center of the wheel. And then the Kia logo, which typically is located right in the middle of the hub, is actually offset to one side. This is one of the funkiest wheels I've seen in a long time. I thought this was going to be some concept pre-production thing that would never see the light of day. But no, this is actually going to be an option on the EV9. And yes, it's bold. Yes, I'd love to hear your comments in the uh, section below because I think we're probably going to get some uh, interesting features feedback on these wheels, but I think it looks fantastic. Um, and also the EV9 is going to be available in a couple of different sizes, ranging from about 19 inches up to 21 inches. This funky design is a 20 inch wheel. Now I'm going to pull out some notes here because I don't want to make any uh, errors in my, uh, my lengths and, and my specs on, on the size of this vehicle, but this is a large vehicle. So what Kia has said they've done is they've benchmarked the Telluride and then they've gone and tried to improve the experience basically across the list, ac across, the, um, across the board, which I think is cool. So they've improved the driving experience, they've improved the handling, they've improved the interior, they've made it more luxurious than the Telluride. So here are my notes. Now the wheelbase on the EV9 is 122 inches long and the overall length is 197.4. In comparison, the Kia Telluride, their gas going uh, three row is 196 inches long. So this vehicle is closing in on eight inches longer than the gasoline based Telluride. Now along the side, we see a bunch of interesting trim details. So this GT line here gets the polished black mirrors. It also also gets polished black fender flares so you can see these black trim pieces which surround the wheels and um, once again a little bit of a visual trick the actual wheel arch is very rounded but because they have used angles on the top and the bottom it makes the car look much more square jawed same thing as we take a look at the side trim here so lots of shiny black plastic I'm a little worried about the durability of this long term especially with kids getting in and out running um, soccer gear and stuff into this how is that going to hold up and then a silver bottom finishing piece here and then of course they've blacked out the B and the C pillar to give it a more concept car like profile and then you've got this dramatic sweep up toward the D pillar there um, with this body colored insert really accentuates the width of the quarter panel really makes this car look a lot more tough and then we've got gloss black roof bars up top and then as we make our way to the rear um, Easily one of the best designs, I think, in the industry in the back of this car. So this basic taillight design is pretty similar to what we see in the Telluride, but it's much more accentuated by the, um, the running light design and also by the brake lights. And you get these little streaks in the brake lights with these little grooves. Really cool looking design. Out back, you got a pretty small spoiler. Um, in the rear here with of course your camera integrated there and then a large Kia badge located right there across the center of the of the of the gate and then on the bottom left you see EV9 logoing uh, along the bottom rear which is really quite good so overall I think the styling of this car is bold I think it's exciting I think it's different it's something we really haven't seen in the EV space and just because it squared off doesn't mean that you completely lose um, all practicality and all um, aerodynamic uh, capability of the EV9, which is really, really neat. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the inside because the exterior is very bold, but have they done the same on the inside? Now the focus on the EV9 has definitely been toward luxury. The focus has definitely been toward refinement, um, more so than a sporty driving experience and uh, you know a, a rugged utilitarian cabin. So the space in this vehicle is still very impressive, but uh, lots of luxurious materials, lots of luxurious sustainable treatments done to the inside of this car that focus on um, you know keeping the planet alive, but also delivering a premium driving experience. So the main focus on the inside has to be the dual screen binnacle, which we see in a lot of other Kia products. You've got your main screen here. You've got your, your screen here um, for your infotainment that you interact with. And then kind of unusual in the middle here, you actually get this little panel to differentiate the two. And this is going to be your climate control panel. So in this panel, we have buttons for automatic climate control. We've got a little fan speed down there and turn AC on and off. You got your temperature control and it all comes to life as needed. So none of this screen here is, uh, is used without a purpose. You got your fan control there. You can control the direction. Look at that. Look how futuristic those little streaks look when you tap on the little man. 
And then there's even a feature here where you can turn on driver only. So if you're driving by yourself, you don't have a passenger, you don't have people in the back seat, you can optimize the range of this vehicle by selecting driver only there um, and help save some juice for uh, your road trip or, or whatever you may be on. Now in front of that here, you can see we've got our main cluster screen here, very configurable. You got two basic design elements. You got your speed on the left, you've got your information on the right, um, and then you can cycle through that via little page screens here. You can see your current trip. Very, very cool. You can see power distribution all done through here. That's also where you're gonna control all your ADAS functionality, like your lane centering, like your adaptive cruise control, all is gonna show up in that center screen. Now, speaking of some of these really cool features that, that we find on the steering wheel, the um, Kia does come with the latest and greatest of Hyundai um, safety systems. So you've got stuff like the lane centering, like the adaptive cruise control. Uh, but one thing which I really like that they've done on the EV9 is the way they make sure you're paying attention. So you got your cruise on, it's following the car in front of you, you got the car steering in the lane, it's still a level two system, it's not hands off, um, but they've revised the way you interact with the system. So in previous cars on the market, and Kias and Hyundais too, to let the car know you're paying attention, you have to apply some torque to the steering wheel. And if you don't apply enough torque, the car thinks you've fallen asleep and it will deactivate the system after some time. Well, they've actually changed that and they've made this a smart steering wheel with some capacitive control. So as long as you are physically touching the steering wheel, the car knows now that you're paying attention that you haven't fallen asleep. So you don't have to be constantly wiggling the wheel or applying some torque to let the car know you're still there engaged. You simply have your hand on the wheel you can make that happen. Now beyond that, we also have paddle shifts here to change the different regen modes, including an auto regen, which will pay attention to the traffic in front of you and help um, maximize the amount of power back into the battery. We'll also maximize the braking force applied through regenerative braking. Uh, we also have a couple different drive modes, which you can activate via a little button down here in the steering wheel, and even a four-wheel drive lock. So if you're in really tough situations, engage that four-wheel drive lock and it'll help maximize the traction and the torque applied to both motors, which is very, very nice. Now, a Across the dashboard, some other interesting things here. Let's take a look at the center screen. Very, very panel based, similar to what we see with other Hyundai Kia products, but I'm noticing that it's um, more modern in its look and the design elements with these squares really match the, uh, the aesthetic of the car. Uh, let's go into, let's, let's take a look at one that people um, interact with on a regular basis. That's going to be the map setting. So look at that crystal clear map here. It does, of course, have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. You can interact with it in that way. But um, I really do like the Hyundai Kia systems. I find them to be pretty snappy, find them to be pretty immediate. And then we have these illuminated buttons across the dashboard, which are haptic and touch sensitive. So they do give you some feedback when you push in on the button. The dash does vibrate a little bit um, and then allows you to work through it that way. But if you don't like physical or if you don't like um, digital controls, there are still some analog ones such as the volume knob, which is now this little barrel control, but you can still spin it just like you would on, uh, on any other car except instead of being um, positioned perpendicular to the dash, it's integrated. You also have volume controls here in the steering wheel. So a couple of different ways to adjust the volume. And then here we have physical controls for the fan speed and the automatic climate control temperature all adjusted there across the dash. Thin, elegant air vents, which continue their way, accentuate the width of the car. A little bit of wool finish there. And then some interesting materials, which we'll take a look at on the outside, um, which are once again sustainable and not, you know, slapping wood and trees across the dash. And I really like this headliner material, which is almost like a wool finish. Feels really, really nice. And then they've incorporated lots of interesting things which you typically wouldn't find. So these seats are a two-tone finish, dark gray on the tan in this spec. And then they've got this mesh um, finish for the uh, headrest, which I find to be really comfortable. I like that a lot. Now, as we make our way below the screens here, a couple of things worth noting. We do have um, ports here for USB-Cs, and look at this, a couple of interesting different modes here. You can change it from charging only to charging plus connection. And when you do that, the colors change, which is really nice. And then to the right of that, you have a charging USB-C there, and then you can turn a 12 volt on and off push in there, you can activate the, uh, or get access, I should say, to the little 12 volt socket. The center console is very clever. Lots of stuff going on here. So first off at the top, you do have little cubby, very small cubby, and you'll see why in a second. And then you have wireless charging with uh, NFC capability there. This is the key, by the way, very futuristic looking, lots of interesting materials there. Um, and then in front of that, 
hidden behind this little roll away panel, you're going to find your cup holders and you can configure these as both just a storage cubby if you don't need the additional space or you can push in and engage the cup holder which is quite nice. Behind here we've got our parking sensors, parking cameras, 360 degree cameras, the door is open which is why it's having a nice view of that wheel there and then hill descent control and this button right here is not actually a button that is the fingerprint reader so that you can um, activate the car get in and interact with it using your fingerprint below that here Kia says they've addressed a common complaint on a lot of vehicles which is space for a handbag space for bags in general nice solid cubby there so if you did have a handbag or a purse or grocery bags put them in there easy to get to not going to go rolling away anywhere Beyond that, this little stock here is a column shift. So the reason they allow so many, so much flexibility with the center console is they've gone to a column shift with the start, stop, and the drive selection here by rotating forward and back and then pushing in for the parking cog. Looks really, really nice. And then across the door panels, lots of interesting features which are unique to the Kia EV9. So the door handle, right, doesn't appear to be shared with any other Kia I've seen. The door switches, they feel really good, really high quality, lots of emphasis put toward quality. This model does have heated seats, ventilated seats, heated steering wheel, and a new ergonomic massage functionality which will engage little um, um, like bags in the backrest and the bottom rest to kind of give you some support and give you some, some cushion there. Interesting thing up top, small sunroof. You probably were wondering, that's kind of disappointing. It's because there's a secondary sunroof for rear passengers, which we're going to check out right now. So the EV9 is, of course, a three-row family-oriented car. Um, and that's kind of unusual across the EV landscape. So we've seen like the Model X, we've seen the Model Y. Um, you can get various Teslas in the seven-seat configuration, but even the Model X is a pretty small third row. Um, apart from that, you've got vehicles like the ID Buzz coming out, right, which has a very big third row, but that's more of a van shape, where this is more of a uh, conventional SUV shape. But let's check out this configuration. Now, this one does have the captain's chairs in the rear. And one of the interesting things which Kia has emphasized is the ability to put various seats in the car into recline modes or to put them into lounge modes. So the captain's chairs back here have a little footrest which pop out of the base and you've got full electric recline and forward and back movement. So if you're not only a kid but if you're looking for a comfortable place to road trip in the back of the EV9 you can do so just by um, electrically moving uh, the seats around, which I think is really cool. Now as we look at this center console, a couple other things that we notice right off the bat dual cup holders and remember I said that the cubby was pretty small it's because they have put this enormous they call it a little table that juts out from the center console and then if we fold this open you can see that they've made this into an enormous cubby so one of the big complaints they found especially from parents was you know kids have a lot of stuff they got bottles and they've got toys and then the whole back seat just becomes filled with the stuff well they've incorporated this into the second row so that you can put your kids toys and stuff away into this little bin and not have to worry about it not have to see it that right there is a really nice feature and then of course it pops out they can play cards and that whatever they may other things worth noting in the back of the ev9 if you want the ultimate in comfort you can push a couple buttons when no one is sitting in this front passenger seat recline that forward and go into full relax mode and then they have integrated usb-c ports on the backs of both front seats there now if you're wondering is there climate control in the second row there sure is it's located um I call this Tahoe style in the roof, which looks really nice. And then you actually turn the, the vents on and off by spinning the bezel. And they've incorporated uh, separate panels for second and third row climate in the back here. You can push that on and off, adjust the temperature, and then turn it off if not in use. But let's check out the third row because that is, of course, one of the most important parts of a vehicle like this is access and comfort in the third row. By the way, check this out. You thought heated seats in the back seat were cool. How about ventilated second row seats? Man, I feel um, very jealous of whatever kid is going to have access to this back seat because this is way better than anything I ever had as a kid. This thing is awesome. Oh, yes, look at that. That's pretty cool. So you push a button, car does it all for you automatically. Very, very cool. Okay, checking out the third row. Now this of course is the GT line. It does move a little slowly, but I'm also noticing there's a red lever on the back of these. 
Oh, look at that. You can fold them down. Push of a pull of a lever, which is really cool. Okay, so I'm in the third row now. Let's see how comfortable it is back here. Um, this is, by the way, is another interior trim. You got the black on the white, which looks really good. Um, now, what's nice about this, oh, it is, it's just going for it. If you don't have enough third row space, you can move these forward electrically. Ask the person in front of you to scoot it forward. But actually, I'm really impressed. One of the great things about having such a boxy form factor is that, you know, a lot of modern crossovers, they slope the rear end uh, and you end up with not a lot of space for headroom, but even at six feet tall, I've got a lot of space back here and I find myself to be very, very comfortable. And we even have vents for the third row. Twist that little dial, you can angle them like that. Got a couple of cup holders back here as well, two on each side, so third row passengers can be very well ventilated. And also keep your stuff charged. Check that out via that little uh, power uh, USB-C there on the back of the third row. Now, of course, these large three-row SUVs are more, in, should include more than just a lot of space for passengers. They gotta have a lot of space for stuff. And once again, I'm gonna pull out my phone of justice so I can get all my numbers right. So there's 20.2 cubic feet of room behind the third row, and then 81.9 when you fold down all the seats. It's a little less than the Telluride, which is gonna come in at closer to 87. Let's see how simple it is to fold down the third row. As someone who's never done it before. Ooh, I do like that. So where this car does have a lot of manual seat configuration or automatic seat configuration for the second row, the third row is all manual. And you can see just the sheer amount of space that provides. And then even right here, Alex, check this out. There are little buttons and you can put the second and the third row up and down. Uh, the, sorry, you can put the second row up and down using those little buttons is really quite nice. What else do we have back here, which is of use? We've got this little Kia back. Should we open this up, see what that offers? Okay, just your standard, um, looks like your standard level one charge connector there. Nothing too fancy. AC 120 volts, 12A. That's uh, included, which is quite nice. And um, got these little Velcro straps. So that's not gonna go sliding around. And then you can see you get a nice flat uh, configuration there when you fold down the second row. Of course, this one does have the captain's chair, so there's a small gap, but if you wanted to go camping or put really large items, that is an option. See, any understore, underfloor storage? Just a little bit. And then I don't believe that this car is gonna come included with a spare tire. Looking underneath, no flat floor. It's just gonna have the tire inflation kit. Now beyond that back here, one thing which Kia has realized is people do want to be able to power their accessories. So we've got a 125 volt, 125 volt, 15 amp plug there. Anything in here worth noting? Nope, nothing that you should need on a daily basis in that little cubby. And then over here, oh, we got a hold button so you can hold the tailgate from opening and closing just like that, which is really, really nice. And then of course, full power tailgate, which you actuate up here using this button. Very, very nice. So I'm pretty impressed with the trunk space in this vehicle. What about towing capacity? Because people do buy three row crossovers and SUVs to tow a lot of stuff with. Well, this car can be specced in all wheel drive with a tow hitch and when properly specced, it'll tow up to 5,000 pounds. Pretty similar to what um, a lot of uh, gas crossovers will tow. Not nearly as much as like a, as a um, Tahoe or an Expedition or something like that, but pretty similar to what a comparable gasoline a vehicle will uh, will be able to tow. Now I'm going to pull out my trusty numbers of truth and talk about the stuff that people really want to know, which is the range, the power, and some of the capability of the EV9. So range varies between 220 and 300 miles depending on the spec. Now these are not official EPA numbers. These are still in the works. Um, but these are estimates that, Hunt, that Kia has provided and they say in a lot of cases are a little conservative. Now, if you get the small battery, which is 76.1 kilowatt hours, and you get rear wheel drive, you can only get um, um, all wheel drive on the big battery, but, but um, rear wheel drive on the small battery, um, 220 miles rear wheel drive is what they're estimating. Rear wheel drive, big battery, 300 miles all-wheel drive big battery between 240 and 250 miles. That was very confusing. Let me start that over just so we're all on the same page here. So small battery, rear-wheel drive only. Big battery, you can get either rear-wheel drive 
or all wheel drive. And once again, small battery rear wheel drive, 220, big battery rear wheel drive, 300, big battery all wheel drive, which I think is what most folks are gonna opt with when you're getting an EV9 because you want the all wheel drive, that's gonna be between 240 and 250 miles. Now, what about horsepower? Well, small battery rear wheel drive, 215 horsepower. Not a lot of horsepower on paper for a large vehicle, but um, that's gonna propel you to zero to 60 in about eight seconds. If you get the big battery rear wheel drive, interestingly enough, horsepower drops to 201, and that's due to voltage differences between the, the small and the big battery pack. That's gonna do zero to 60 in 8.8 .8 seconds. So that's not gonna be a super zippy one, right? If you want performance, don't get the big battery rear wheel drive. Uh, if you spec all wheel drive, zero to 60 is going to be as low as five seconds. Now, the peak power on the all wheel drive model, 379 horsepower, 443 pound feet of torque is gonna to be standard, 516 pound feet of torque is gonna to be optional. This GT line, this is the big Kahona, it's gonna have the full 516 pound feet of torque. Now, what if you buy your EV9 with the 443 torque and all wheel drive and you think, you know, maybe I should have got the, the, the full Kahona um, in terms of torque number, you can actually purchase, according to Kia, over the air, a power upgrade. So if you decide later on, okay, I should have got the faster one, I wanna go zero to 60 in five seconds instead of five and a half, you can go to them and say, hey, I wanna do this. They're gonna charge you for it, of course. We don't know how much they're gonna charge you for, um, but then you'll be able to uh, upgrade, them, upgrade your Kia to a quicker car. Now charge time, this is a big deal, right? Kia says 10 to 80% in less than 25 minutes. eGMP is the fantastically quick 800 volt architecture. Peak charge rates, once again, are interesting. The small battery actually has a higher peak charge rate. Once again, they said depending on, that's because of um, um, the voltage and because of packaging. So the peak charge rate on the small battery, 236 kilowatts. Peak charge rate on the big battery, 215. So you do lose some peak charge rate by going to the big battery. But once again, these cars are all about area under the curve. It's all about putting as much juice as possible into these cars as quick as possible. That's going to, of course, be on the maximum 350 kilowatt, 800 plus volt charger that you can find. But 25 minutes, 10 to 80 percent, pretty good. That range number, though, 240, 250 for the all-wheel drive spec, it's okay, right? Uh, Model X, Model Y, they are quoted at over 300 according to EPA. Real world, those cars are maybe a little bit optimistic. So we're gonna to have to wait and see how the EV9 performs in the real world to determine is that enough range. Big battery, by the way, is just under 100 kilowatt hours. Um, but apart from that, folks, let's see if there's any other things that we can really start poking around with here. It appears they really don't want you pop in the front trunk. The, uh, the latch was much easier to get to in the silver one. Okay, well, let's go see what that. Let's go see what that looks like, thank you. There's like a little little panel which kind of blocks the latch to the front trunk, which tells me that there probably isn't a front trunk. All right, moment of truth. We took the full presentation too and they didn't talk about a front trunk, which is usually a good indication there is not a front trunk. Well, they really don't want me getting in here, do they, Alex? No. Should I try pulling it again? You want to see, maybe it's a double pull? This is what happens when you get live one takes. Oh, there is a front trunk. Why do they make it so hard to get to? Look at that. Nice little space in here. Get your little emergency release. That's a pretty good sized little front trunk. I thought that this was going to be um, a front cubby situation, or as they say, a, as I say, a frubby, like what you get in the um, Ionic 5 and the EV6. But actually, look, good space. I just don't know why they make it so hard to get to. There's like, if you want to look over here, there's like this little, little panel. See that? It's like a little block off panel. And then you, oof. That's how you get in there. Why do they make that so hard to access? That's a really cool feature. Very, very interesting. Let me know what you think of that in the comment section below. But just to verify, yeah, look at that space. Super usable. Now you know, if you want to hide something in an EV9, that's the place to do it, because that's a pretty uh, interesting little tidbit. Now I want to show you a couple other things here, Alex. Um, we'll do this really quick. 
power port is located here on the passenger quarter panel. And they've, they've, they've put a lot of work into sustainable materials here. So we've got 10 different sustainable materials which make up the interior um, of the vehicle. So for example, bioplastic here, they use in the dashboard garnishes, the console and the pillars, PCM plastic, door garnishes, bio um, uh, materials from corn is for the seats and interior coverings. We've got recycled PET fabrics. This is my favorite one. I think this is really cool. That comes from stuff like old bottles, which then gets crushed down to these little pellets and turned into uh, materials. Fishing nets for the, uh, um, the floor carpet. And you would never know because it actually feels really, really nice. Beyond that, bio PU form for um, the headrests. So that's what that comes from. That's made out of castor oil. Um, we've got some uh, other materials here for switches. These are the door switch panels made out of um, uh, rapeseed oil extract. The BTX free paint is for the interior painted components. And then we've got PET yarns, which makes up the st seat stitching and then recycled PET felt for the uh, luggage board. Look at that. And then if you want to come over here, we get a little bit more insight into some of the different options and colors that you can get on the EV9. This is a clay mock-up. Looks very cool. They did such a cool job with the exterior styling. Um, but you get kind of a nice variety of colors. You get gloss colors here, like grading from gray to the whites, the red to the silvers. Um, you get some kind of darker gloss colors. And then these are the two really exciting ones here. You get the two matte colors. So you get that silver, which we saw earlier. You can also get that blue in the mat, but these typically take a little bit more work to maintain, a little bit more work to make sure that, you know, you're doing a good job of uh, keeping the car unscratched because it can be kind of tricky to fix those matte colors. And then let's talk about some of the um, carpet materials. A few different colors. Um, it says, please do not touch. Finish sustainable interior materials. Oh man, I've already broken the rules. But you can see all of the different door trims, all of the different color trims, which are available in the uh, the key, Kia EV9. But guys, overall, I think Kia has done a great job on this vehicle, right? It's so exciting to see three row options. Two big things that we still don't know: um, pricing. I've asked about pricing; it hasn't been announced. I would suspect starting price around sixty thousand dollars somewhere in that uh, territory. And I asked them specifically, I said, are you doing anything about dealer markups? They said, look, the dealer network is their own independent businesses. They can't control what they do. That's a real bummer to me though. I wish that they had a plan in place to help combat dealer markups because that was such a big shame when the uh, Telluride came to market it was the crazy markups we saw on those cars. And I suspect we're gonna see even more on the EV9 because it takes the Telluride formula, cranks it to 11 and makes it even more exciting. And then availability, uh, fourth quarter of this year. So coming up this winter. Now, what does that mean in the real world? When are you gonna be able to get one? Once again, not really sure, right? They're hitting dealers then, but what are, what are dealers gonna do in terms of queuing systems, lines, and then of course those markups. Guys, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Alex is dying behind the camera. Thank you for your help, Alex. We'll see you in the next video.